So as we've set the atmosphere, whether you are still in bed or whether you're sitting like we are and you're just preparing your hearts, we want to go ahead and declare in this next song that we know who it is that we serve. And we introduced it to you guys a couple of weeks ago, so we hope you're a little bit more familiar with it right now. We're going to keep with the acoustic vibe, so if you want to snap along with us like this. And as you remember the words, you can sing it with me. Let it be known that our God saves, our God reigns. We lift you up, up. Let it be known that love has come, love has won. We lift you up. Oh, come on. Snap your fingers like this. So will you sing it? Come on, let's turn it. Come on, let's turn it up. We're gonna, We're gonna sing it out for all the world to hear. Oh, there's love for everyone. Why? A new day has begun. Something to shout about. So let it be, let it be known that our God saves, our God reigns. We lift you up. Let it be known that love has come, love has won. We lift you up, sing, oh, oh. celebrate on why nothing can stop us now no one can keep us down we found our voice again Shout your name now, louder and louder. You say, Come we on. lift your name up, up. higher and higher. We shout your name now, right. louder and louder. We lift your name, we lift your name we up, your name. higher and higher. We shout, it out. We shout your name now, louder and louder. louder, and louder. We, lift we lift your name up, and higher and higher. We shout it out. We shout and we lift his name higher and higher and higher and higher until his whole place just begins to shake and move with your presence, Lord. Come on, let's sing, oh.
Well, good morning, family and friends, and thank you so much for worshiping with us this Sunday. My name is Pastor Ryan. Welcome to the Rock Fellowship, our worship service online. And we're so glad you are here worshiping with us this morning. It's, you know, we, we, we knew what was going on in 2020, uh, but we're seeing 2021 off to a, um, a very interesting beginning, a very interesting start. And so uh, this is a great reason why we don't put our faith, our hope in man-made things like politics, like government, um, or any other institution. And, and yes, we participate in those things and uh, uh, we're involved in those things, but ultimately our hope, uh, our faith, our trust is in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so uh, no matter what's going on in this world and in this society, we place our faith in the unshakable kingdom um, of Jesus Christ. And so if this is your first time worshiping with us, uh, what I want you to do is take a quick second and uh, either either pull out your phone, there's a QR code that's going to be on the screen and use your smart device and scan that code. Um, or if you're on our streaming page, go to the connect form and fill that out for us. And what we want to do is just gather a little bit of information and then we want to reach out to you, either myself or Pastor Daryl or Minister Jimmy. Uh, we just want to call you. We want to love on you. We want to pray with you and just thank you. Uh, for taking some time and joining us this morning. And, and for our members, if you have any prayer requests or anything that you want to share with us, you use that same uh, Connect form or the QR code as well. Just have one announcement, and that is just to remember, we are continuing our midweek fast and Bible study for the whole month of January. So we're asking, remember, all members who want to and are willing to participate to uh, to fast their Wednesday evening meal. And then we're going to gather as a church on Wednesday evenings from 8 to 9, 9.15 or so. And uh, we're going to use that time to jump in the Word of God and to pray. And so we're doing this every Wednesday for the month of January. Same link uh, on Zoom goes out. And uh, we encourage all of our members to join us and participate as we seek the Lord together. Uh, and then right now, as always, go ahead and pull out your, your Bible, uh, pull out some, some, some notepads, some loose sheets of paper, a pen, pencil, so you can take notes. And let's prepare our hearts to hear what uh, God has to say through Pastor Daryl as he brings the word this morning. I invite you to get your Bible out, get your smart device out, get a pad, pencil, however you want to take notes, and we're going to dive into 2 Samuel chapter 9. 2 Samuel. I want to look at this historical narrative, and there's some things I think this is a story that we might be familiar with, uh, but we're going to walk through just chapter 9 and 2 Samuel, and I want you to see something that God is doing here that we can learn from. 2 Samuel chapter 9, starting in verse 1. He says, David asked, is there anyone remaining from the family of Saul I can show kindness to for Jonathan's sake? There was a servant of Saul's family named Ziba. They summoned him to David and the king said to him, are you Ziba? I am your servant, he replied. So the king asked, is there anyone left of Saul's family that I can show the kindness of God to? Ziba said to the king, there is still Jonathan's son who was injured in both feet. The king asked, where is he? Ziba answered the king, you'll find him in Lodabar at the house of Makur, son of Amiel. So King David had him brought from the house of Makar, son of Amiel in Lodabar. Mephibosheth, son of Jonathan, son of Saul, came to David, fell face down and paid homage. David said, Mephibosheth. I am your servant, he replied. Don't be afraid, David said to him, since I intend to show you kindness for the sake of your father, Jonathan, I will restore to you all your grandfather Saul's fields and you will always eat meals at my table. Yes. Mephibosheth paid homage and said, what is your servant that you take interest in a dead dog like me? Then the king summoned Saul's attendant Ziba and said to him, I have given to your master's grandson all that belonged to Saul and his family. You, your sons, and your servants are to work the ground for him, and you are to bring in the crops so your master's grandson will have food to eat. But Mephibosheth, your master's grandson, is always to eat at my table. Mm. Now Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. Ziba said to the king, your servant will do all my lord the king commands. 
So Mephibosheth ate at David's table just like one of the king's sons. Mephibosheth had a young son whose name was Micah. All those living in Ziba's house were Mephibosheth's servants. However, Mephibosheth lived in Jerusalem because he always ate at the king's table. His feet had been injured. It's interesting that during holiday times, especially around Christmas, uh, we get in the, the giving season. We, during Christmas time, we are celebrating the Lord's greatest gift of all in the giving of Messiah coming, our Savior, Jesus. And during those times, we, we get gifts and we pack them up for loved ones, and family members, friends, associates, even workmates, co-workers, bosses. We do all those things. And then sometimes we go above and beyond. We'll pick out charities to give to because we're feeling just quite generous during that season because we're celebrating God giving us our Savior Jesus. When I think about that, I think about how often and how natural it is for us in the body of Christ who worship the Lord, who follow Jesus, who go to church Sunday after Sunday, who attend Bible study throughout the week. We go to small groups and the bulk of our generosity is reserved for Christmas or for some special holiday. And it makes me think, what if our lives were characterized as a whole of showing that kind of thoughtfulness, that kind of generosity, that kind of kindness? In this passage, we see King David showing what he calls the kindness of God. And when I read this, I'm struck. I'm, 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 I'm kind of pushed back to think, is my attitude and lifestyle characterized by one who is at the forefront of my mind? I want to show the kindness of God to others. Yeah. I'm looking for ways to show the kindness of God. I started this out saying even during this COVID-19 with all the, 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 the craziness in our own lives, the pressures in our own lives, it's very natural for us to get very much uh, focused on ourselves, yeah. on our own situation, on our own responsibilities. And that's not a bad thing to think about. We got to take care of our responsibilities. But I asked the question for me and for you, have you neglected the mindset that this is also a great opportunity to show the kindness of God to others and especially to those in need. Even in our need, are we thinking about how we can use what God has given us to take care of and provide for the needs of others? You know, in this passage, uh, we right before it, in chapter 8, we see David is experiencing the exact thing God said would happen. God has established the throne of David. Yes. God has established his throne. He has defeated all his enemies. It goes through the catalog. This king, these people, this king, nobody could stand up to David just like God said he would. And then it gives, it goes over his court right at the end of chapter 8. Who's calling what shots and who's overseeing what? And we see David is in a marvelous position. He is sitting on his throne, fully established, no challenge to his rule. And one of the first things that come to his mind is, who can I show kindness to? Because he's recognized the faithfulness and kindness and generosity of the Lord to him. He, he didn't earn it. He didn't deserve it. He, he was minding his own business as a shepherd boy. He was a kid. And God says, you're going to be anointed king. And then he was patient. He didn't even try to take it from Saul. He, he had two chances. We know especially two chances to take it from Saul. And he says, no, I'm going to let God handle it. And God took care of things. God in his own time. And David was patient. And now David is sitting here and he's reflecting. I see what God has done for me. Nobody has been able to stand against me. And my rule established in all the nation of Israel. And in that grandiose moment, who can I show kindness to? He's experienced the kindness of the Lord. He's experienced the faithfulness of the Lord. And now he's saying, who can I pay that forward to? Who can I seek out? And the first thing I want us to see, even in this setting, 
If you're watching right now, you have been given the resources to use electronics to watch right now. God has provided for you. Just think about that. Think about you got Wi-Fi access to watch what we're watching right now. You have all these things and even under some duress, you may be sitting here watching and things have been tough. I want you to take a catalog of your life right now, where you are in Christ. And I want you to see how God has been faithful, generous, and kind to you right now. And I want you to ask yourself this question. When is it going to be time for me to show that kind of kindness to others? Wow. And I'm going to answer that question for you. It's It's now. It's now right in the midst of this pandemic. We don't know where things are going. The summer's coming up. We don't know where things are going to be. And this is a marvelous time for you as the body of Christ to put the kindness of God on display for the world to see. He says, who, who can I show this kindness to? And then he finds out that Saul had a grandson. And he finds out this because he finds out that Saul's old servant is around. And he said, call, call Saul's old servant. What's his name? Zeba? You Zeba? It's funny. He comes in. Are you Zeba? He's like, I'm your servant. You may be wondering why this kind of language is. Why even when Mephibosheth shows up, they're like, I'm your servant. You're like, this is the new king. Yeah. You know, in ancient times, you, you, you know, you, you had to show a reverence. There was a respect and then there was a fear. Because I want to set this stage. Saul was the previous king. Saul pursued David over and over and over again, not to have a conversation. He pursued him to kill him. He repeatedly tried to kill him. And now David is sitting on the throne. The natural thought is anybody connected to Saul, done with. He calls Zeba in. Zeba, I'm your servant. And he says, is there anybody in Saul's house? Me? My best friend, Jonathan, Saul's son, I, I made him a promise that I would look after, you know, his, 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 even his offspring. We had a covenant relationship, and I want to I honor that. Is there anybody in, his, in Saul's house? Anybody? And he finds out, yeah, actually, Jonathan has a son, and he's in Lodabar. Lodabar, that's, that's not a good place, you know. <laughs> Lodabar, Hebrew word, it means no thing. I mean, Jonathan has a son. He lives in nothing. Yeah. He lives in nothing. And, and David's like, oh, this is perfect. Not only can I honor my word, but this, this goes even better. It's Jonathan's son. Bring him up. Bring him up from the house of Amiel. Bring him up from Makar. I, I, I want to meet him. I want to talk to him. Don't, don't miss this. This kindness didn't just so happen to pop up. You know, it wasn't like he was traveling. It wasn't like you and I when we're driving and all of a sudden we're at a stoplight and then we see somebody asking for change. Yeah. And this is a great opportunity to be kind. This is a kindness that's being sought out. This is a kindness that's intentional. This is a kindness to say, hey, I want to be kind and where can I go? Who needs it? And even when it's not convenient, when it can be inconvenient, we're going to go out of our way to show this kind of kindness and what he characterized as the kindness of God. He says, bring them up from low to bar. Bring them on up. I, I, I say this because I don't want our kindness to only be characterized by when it's convenient and when it's right there at the tip of my hand. That's great. You, you see somebody in need, you have the means, be a blessing. That's great. But don't, don't let it be just reserved for that. Seek opportunities. Do some research. He did some research. I need to know. Zeba, bring Zeba in. Do some more research. Who? Jonathan's son? Mephibosheth? He lives where? There was research involved. Seek opportunities to research those in need. And even when it's inconvenient, seek it out. Go out. He says, bring him up. Now, Mephibosheth comes. He's, He's a cripple. He's injured in both legs. Different English renderings may render it a little different, but his legs don't work. Let's just say it like that. His legs don't work. His legs don't work as intended. He's a cripple showing up at the palace in Jerusalem, coming from nothing. He is the grandson of the king who was killed, and he's now facing the king that his granddaddy repeatedly tried to kill. If you Mephibosheth, you're scared. And you know what you can't do? You can't even run away. 
I don't know that can sound cruel, but let's just let's be real. Let's just be real. You can't even run away. You had to, he's at the full mercy of the king. And the reason I say this is an important note is notice David's response to Mephibosheth. He shows up. He says, Mephibosheth. It's the exclamation point there. Mephibosheth. And he says, I'm your servant. <laughs> and David's response is, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Yes. Mephibosheth has a right to fear. And yet David calms him and says, don't be afraid. I have good intentions for you. I actually called you up because I want to bless you. I want to look after you. I want to take care of you. You know, I, I, I can flip this around. I can, let, let's say that we're Mephibosheth. We can be in positions where we're in need and God sends provision and we may think we're either undeserving, uh, fearful of what it may come with because the person giving it and we can have all these emotions and all these thoughts in our minds. And yet I want to calm you at this moment to let you know if you are in need and God is going to be providing for you, it may come from a place that you never imagined. It may come from one who you thought was an enemy and God is using this person to show you what the kindness of God looks like. Mephibosheth is nervous. He, he, he's scared. And he says, I'm your servant. And David says, don't be afraid. I'm going to show you kindness for your father's sake. Now, I, I, I want you to notice something in here. He, he says, this, this is connected to, to if our David is showing something right. He, he's setting an example right now. He's saying, look, I made some promises. I made a covenant with your dad. And I'm going to honor that with your dad to you. So, you know, it's not because of you. You didn't work for it. You didn't earn it. You don't even deserve it. Matter of fact, I'm a king. I deserve all that land. All your granddaddy's land, I'm the king. That all belongs to me now. But because of my covenant I made with your dad, all your granddaddy's lands, everything he had, I'm giving it to you. Now, this, this, this can seem crazy because you got him coming from nothing, mm -hmm. living in somebody else's place. Remember, he don't even have his own house. Yep. His legs don't work. He lives in somebody else's house and the city he lives in is nothing. <laughs> and now he's moving on up to where now he's not only getting out of nothing and getting some things of his own, he's getting fields. Mm. This, 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 this is amazing. But then, he, but then there's another problem to that. He's getting fields. That sounds great. My legs don't work. I can't plow. I can't plant. I can't harvest. What good, what good is it that I give you a bunch of stuff you can't even work? Did it make any sense? Like, that sounds good. I'm glad to get out of property, but uh, what am I going to do with these fields? <laughs> what am I going to do? I, I have nothing. I have nobody. I can't even pay somebody to do it. I can't work it. I got one son. What are you going to do? And this is where it gets, it gets even heightened. David says, hey, Zeba, come here. Zeba, you, you kind of like Daryl Jones. Huh? You got a bunch of kids, right? <laughs> now, I don't have nothing on them. I only got seven. Zeba had 15, right? He, it says that Zeba had 15. And then it says he had not just 15 kids. He had 15 sons. Now, you know, I, I know we live in a culture, boy, girl, all that. You know, back then, what they said, you got 15 sons, you got a workforce. Yes. You got a bunch of back and muscle. Mm -hmm. They can work, they can till, they can plow, they can harvest. You have a workforce. And on top of that, he had 15 sons and 20 servants. And he said, Zeba, you, you used to serve Saul. Okay, I want you to get all your sons and all your servants. You work for Mephibosheth now. And you will oversee the entire estate. You, your sons, and your servants will work all of the land, and all the food of the land belongs to Mephibosheth. But it's not going to even stop there. But Mephibosheth is going to stay at the palace, and he's going to live in Jerusalem, and he's going to eat at the king's table with the king's children. 
I, I, I love this because we got a problem where he's looking for someone to show kindness to. And it, it goes above and beyond because Mephibosheth comes and he's like, I, I, I don't deserve it. I, I, I can't even work it. I, I can't do anything with it. And then you go above that and you give me a whole workforce to take care of everything. And then you go above that and all my meals are going to be with royalty, mm -hmm. with the king. Now, it, if you don't really understand the significance of this is, remember, Saul was of the tribe of Benjamin. You know, even in Judges, they're characterized as, you know, a, a tribe that was, that was going off, you know, and they weren't doing right. And, and Judah was the tribe, you know, some people say it's foreshadowing, it's historical, so it's foreshadowing David and Saul, but, you know, it, Benjamin wasn't doing right, but then B Benjamin stayed to covenant faithfulness with Judah in the south while the northern tribes, they, they were tripping. Let's just, this, this use that, that theological word, they were tripping in the north. That idolatry, they were, they were falling apart. They were falling away. And, uh, but, but Saul is from Benjamin, and Saul was disobedient numerous times, and the kingdom was taken from Saul and given to David of the tribe of Judah. We got a grandson of Saul who was a disobedient king, an unfaithful king from the tribe of Benjamin, now dining at the king's table, David from the tribe of Judah, whom he's sitting there with all his kids. Yeah. Can you imagine the stories? It was like, yeah, man, you know your, your granddaddy used to try to kill my daddy? <laughs> <clears throat> Give me your macaroni and cheese. You don't deserve that, you know. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm not making stuff up, but, you know, I mean, it's, 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 this is not a natural situation. And yet David was doing something special because his intention was to show the kindness of God. Now, when we think about this, this story resonated in my heart when I started to think about it. this a few years ago. I was preaching through the fruit of the Spirit, and I saw a lot of the fruit of the Spirit from Galatians 5 right here in this text when it came to kindness, goodness, and faithfulness. Yes. Now, now think about, let's think about this, the kindness of God. Typically, when we think about kindness, it means, you know, do, do, doing somebody a solid, you know. Matter of fact, giving unto somebody who really doesn't deserve it, may not have earned it, but you know what? I'm going to show kindness. I'm going to give it to him. I'm going to do this service, whatever it is. Mephibosheth hasn't worked at all for that land. It rightfully belongs to David. Matter of fact, it belongs to David so much to where not just because he's king, but the, the previous owner was trying to kill him. Now he, he has it. I mean, that's typically not something you give away. But he was kind because he says, you know what, you, don't, you can't even work it, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to give it to you. And this is where the goodness comes in. Not only am I going to give this to you, but then I'm going to go above him. I'm going to seek your, your benefit, your well-being. I know you can't work it, and you only got one son. I know you all can't facilitate this entire estate. So I'm going to give you a workforce. I'm putting this kindness on display to the point to where I'm going to show this goodness and I'm going to give you above and beyond so that you can be provided for and your legacy, your son. Everything that comes from you will be taken care of. Why? Because the land is flourishing and it's being tended to by this workforce I'm giving you. And this, this is what I love right here. It all goes back to faithfulness. It goes back to faithfulness because what did David say right at the beginning? It says, um, David, is there anyone remaining from the family of Saul I can show kindness to for Jonathan's sake? When you go back into 1 Samuel, there are a few times where David, David and Jonathan... We call them aces. Day ones. They were best friends, you know. Some people have tried to skew what their relationship is. Let me tell you, that, that's not the case because the Bible has no problems in pointing out David's sin. So David was not in some kind of immoral relationship with Jonathan. They were best friends. They were like brothers. All right, so let me, let me, let me clear that up, right? Let me clear that up. It, it, the Bible has no problem in saying when David sinned and when, you know, it has no problem. Their relationship was like a brotherhood. And he made covenant promises. And, and Jonathan even said, look, I know you're going to be king. I know God has given you the kingdom from my dad. I, I make a covenant right now. And we'll make this together between our, our, our offspring. Yeah. Yeah. David sought out to be faithful. 
Who can I show kindness to for Jonathan's sake? That's him saying, look, and he says, I'm giving you this because of your father. You didn't work for it, deserve it, but because I gave my word, I'm going to be faithful to my word, and I'm going to go above and beyond in showing kindness and goodness. And we think about that is, I know I was challenged by this myself because there have been times to where I might have made a pledge to give something, to do something, but it got kind of inconvenient, and I was like, yeah, God, no, I'll get to it. I get to it. When we say we're going to do something, let's be faithful to what we say we're going to do. If we say we're going to do this for the Lord, if we're going to help these people out, if we're going to give, whatever it is that we're doing, be faithful to what you say. May we be faithful to what we say, what we promise, and the expectations that we give to others. He says, I, I, I'm going to do this for Jonathan's sake. You know what I'm saying all this? Because I want you to think about this as the body of Christ during this time, during this season. God is our source and he's continuing to take care of us. He's continuing to provide for us. Don't get so focused on self during this time. It's very natural and it's very easy to do. Don't get so focused on self right now. As God is providing for you, I'm challenging you right now, Journey Church. Whoever's listening, if you're a visitor right now, you're tuning in right now. I'm challenging you to seek out, be intentional, to look after, pursue opportunities to show the kindness of God to others, especially for those in need. Now, and I'm saying seek it out. I mean, be open to when it shows up. Now, I want you to be open to when opportunity presents itself. But I want this to be how we as the body of Christ, how we as committed followers of Jesus Christ are known. And we're known by exhibiting and displaying the kindness of God to others. Even when they don't deserve it, when they hadn't earned it, and it's characterized and going above and beyond. What are we saw David went above and beyond. He says, I'm going to give you your granddaddy's land, and I'm going to give you a workforce to till it, and I'm going to allow you to eat at my table. That's amazing. That's above and beyond kindness. That's, that's why it's called the kindness of God. Sometimes we think just doing somebody a solid, just doing, you know, the, the very bare minimum. Well, at least I did this. At least I gave that. Is that the heart of God? Mm. Or is it to go above and beyond? Because it becomes an example. You know what Ms. Fibbishev learned? He learned a few things that day. He learned a few things about what it means to be God's king. The one who was representing and, and exercising God's rule in the nation of Israel. He was learning some things about God's heart. He would learn some things about even forgiveness. He learned some things about grace, what he didn't deserve. He learned some things about faithfulness. And why do I say this? Because David was Messiah. David was the covenant king of Israel. But you know, he wasn't the consummate ultimate king. There was one to come who was promised that would come through his line and would establish the throne of David. But he would not just rule Israel. He would rule the nations. And you know what David has done for us in an example with Mephibosheth? He has foreshadowed some things about this coming Messiah whom we know as Jesus the Christ. What do I say that? We all, because of our sin, because of our rebellion, we come from nothing. We have nothing to offer. At our best day, we're crippled. We can't do anything when it comes to our forgiveness, our salvation, and our standing before God. But Jesus is kind. Yes. He says, even though I don't deserve it, you know, come here. He's inviting us to him from nothing. We offer him nothing. And while we deserve punishment, because Mephibosheth coming from Saul, in a sense, is an enemy to David. And he's a threat to the throne because he's an heir of Saul. But Jesus shows us what we learn from this story in David that even though we don't deserve, even while we were 
enemies while we were sinners. Christ loved us. He demonstrated his love while we were yet sinners. Christ died for us. He's called us to himself. And he says, you don't deserve it, but I'm going to show kindness to you. And I'm going to go above and beyond. I'm going to provide for you all that you need. Don't worry. You don't have to work for it because you can't work for it. I provide for it. Yeah. I'm going to take care of all your needs. And you know what? It's not just that. You will dine at my table. The Bible is very clear that we who are in Christ in the new heavens, new earth, we will dine with yes. him yes. at the king's table. So you thought this story was just about David and Mephibosheth, but it was pointing us to something much greater of God's grace, his forgiveness, and his faithfulness because he promised this is what he offers in the new covenant. And when Jesus, during when he was laying out the Lord's Supper, and he said, this is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for the forgiveness of sins for many, he was pointing them back to the old covenant, that the old covenant spoke to the new covenant to come when he would put his spirit in his people, wash their sins completely away, and they forever his people, he forever our God. That is who Jesus is. This is what David's example is pointing us to so that we can understand it's not just about some fields and some servants. It's about ultimately sitting at the king's table. And because we, as followers of Jesus Christ, recognize the kindness of God, we recognize the goodness of God and what he's done for us through the person and finished work of Jesus Christ, because we recognize his faithfulness to us in every promise he has given. He is faithful to every single promise he's ever made. He's never missed a one. He's never dropped a one. He's never dropped a ball. He's never thrown a, a, a ball. He's ne he only throws strikes. He's perfect. Everything he's ever said, he has fulfilled and come through. And because we recognize that, let us be like David and say, I recognize what God has done for me. Who can I now show the kindness of God to? Because what God has done for me, because of what God has done for you, my call and my challenge to you, Journey Church, my call and challenge any visitor that's looking right now is I want you to recognize what God has done for you through the person and work of Jesus Christ. And when we do come face to face with that truth, our hearts will be like David, a, a heart after God's own heart. And who can I now show that kindness to? Who can I now show that goodness to? Who can I now display God's faithfulness to? So that they too may come to know the one true God. Yes. When it comes to the kindness of God, it's above and beyond. It's not the bare minimum. It's not, it's not just shooting for that passing grade. We, we, we going for extra credit. When I say extra credit, is we, we, we offer God nothing. Remember, we, we, we can't do anything. He's only pleased with our faith anyway. You know, we're not getting extra credit or checks in heaven. What I am saying is that at our best ability, whatever talent, whatever opportunity, whatever passion, whatever skill, whatever resources we have, may we put those on display in showing the kindness of God to others so that they may know who God is, his love. His kindness, his goodness, and his faithfulness. And we do it all to the glory of Jesus, who was the Christ. Yes. I'm going to invite you to pray with me right now. Father, I'm grateful for your word. I'm grateful for such faithfulness. And your faithfulness to David, he said, I, I want to show the kindness of God to somebody. And he sought it out. And he put on display what a heart after God's own heart looks like. But he also, we, we, we were reminded, we were, we, we were getting a peek into what the ultimate Messiah would do for us. Not just in this life, but even in the life to come. And we are so grateful yes. for your word. And we are grateful, Lord, ultimately for your faithfulness. So, Lord, may we, as the body of Christ, mm. may we, right now in the midst of this craziness, this COVID-19, this pandemic, we quarantine, when are we going to come out? Are we going to go back in? We have all these unknowns. What we do know right now is we have breath in our lungs. We have life in our bodies and we have opportunity to put you on display. May we do it faithfully. Only as a response to your faithfulness. Lord, empowers by your Holy Spirit to walk this out. 
And we will give your name all the glory, honor, and praise. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, family, what a challenging and on-time word from Pastor Daryl this morning coming out of 2 Samuel and uh, looking at part of David's life. And, and the reason why I say challenging is because, like I said earlier today, um, there's so much going on in our society right now. There's so much anger. There's so much hate. Uh, there's so much uh, of a spirit of vengeance. And sometimes there's, there's an apprehension on our behalf to be kind to people, to show kindness to people. We don't want to be taken advantage of. We don't want to be hurt. And so sometimes it's, you know, I don't know if I should be kind, but um, here we, 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 we have a powerful challenge to not just be kind, but to be intentional about our kindness, to seek somebody out to show kindness to. And so thank you, Pastor Daryl, for that wonderful challenge to us. And uh, we're going to continue in worship. And, and we use that language on purpose in our time of giving, because giving is an act of worship, as we always say, and as we have taught about. And so you're just not giving to the church. You're just not giving because Pastor Daryl or Pastor Ryan asks to give. Uh, we are giving as an act of obedience and as an act of worship unto the Lord himself. And so as usual, family and friends, there's multiple ways you can give, and those ways will be on the screen right now. And uh, whichever way is more uh, that you're more comfortable with or, or that you're used to giving, we just ask you to go ahead and give your, your offering unto the Lord at this time. Um, and, you know, going along with the sermon today, part of, of, of what we do with our offerings is to do just this, to show the kindness of the Lord as we do ministry here in South Florida and as we seek out individuals that we can minister to, that we can love on, we, we, can, we can pray with, uh, we can share the gospel with and, and, and try to impact their spiritual needs, but then we also want to show kindness and impact their physical needs as well. And so this is another opportunity um, to take action on the sermon that you heard this morning. And, and so we thank you um, for your faithful giving to the ministry. And family, we just want to close with a quick word of prayer. As always, let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for this morning. We thank you for the opportunity to come before you and worship you at the beginning of a new year, 2021, Father. And uh, what, what an on-time word, Father. Help all of us, Holy Spirit, stir up in us a spirit of of kindness, a spirit to go out and intentionally look for somebody to be kind to and to share the love of Jesus with, Father. As we go our separate ways, I pray that you bless each individual who's watching this uh, worship service, Father. Be with us this week and allow us to have a great week in the Lord. We love you and we ask this in your son's name. Amen. There is none. Yeah.